Today is Prison Sunday. It's the start of a week of prayer and support for everyone involved in prison life, including prisoners and the victims of their crimes. I'm being allowed into a closed prison, HMP Wayland in Norfolk, to seek out examples of belief behind bars. Tonight, I meet some of those who live and work in this prison community, and congregations from towns and cities all over the country which have a prison as part of their community sing hymns of penitence and forgiveness. Built in 1985 in the Norfolk countryside, Her Majesty's Prison Wayland is a Category C prison. That's for adult males who aren't likely to try to escape, but can't quite be trusted in an open prison. How are you? Here in Wayland, there are around 1,000 inmates who currently fit that description. Bob Wilson is a Baptist minister and a member of Wayland's multi-faith prison chaplaincy team. There's no godless place. You know, God is essentially everywhere and he's just as much in here as he is out through the, the gates the other side. But haven't, haven't prisoners failed God in, in a serious way? They've failed humanity in a serious way, they've failed themselves in a serious way, they've failed their victims in a serious way, they've failed community in a serious way. But I don't think God is surprised at what they did. I think God knows all of us. Jesus, in Matthew 25, he was really, really clear when he said that when you look into the eyes of prisoners, you see me. He says that for whatever you did for the least of these brothers of mine, you did also for me. And so I, I often think when I look into the eyes of prisoners, I see the eyes of Jesus there. The Stations of the Cross here in the prison chapel graphically tell the story of how Jesus, an innocent man, was executed as a common criminal. And yet, with almost his last breath, Jesus forgave his murderers and showed compassion to a repentant thief.
contrary to popular opinion, prison is far from being a holiday camp. Very few possessions are allowed outside the basics, but prisoners can have access to music and to things they might need to practice their faith in what's otherwise a strict and Spartan environment. But the noise of rattling keys and banging doors is never far away. This prison's a really good training prison that is working every day with, with prisoners to try to support effective rehabilitation. We have in the prison probation service a motto that talks about preventing victims by changing lives and that's absolutely what Wayland's about. It works very hard with individual prisoners to make them think about why it is that they've been offending, to give them skills to help them to change. Very many prisoners come in with very low levels of numeracy, literacy and we also train them in ICT. So there's a whole range of vocational training as well as programs to help them to think through about why they've been offending. I really believe God has placed me in the prison. In here we run level one and level two plastering and level one and level two bricklaying. And basically we kit the guys out so they can build a house really from bottom to top. Um, is it wise giving prisoners tools that they could uh, use for escape? They're all checked before we start each session. They're all checked after each session. They're all locked away safely at the end of the day. They're really well protected. I know it sounds silly, but I get that light bulb moment when you see somebody can do something for the first time. The guys need to learn, and if we can give them a hope for the future, they can find work. They're going to be earning an input and back into the community, which is what it's all about. There's been people go from this prison and helped in the community recently, and it's just important that we can do that. They can't do that without the skills. As well as learning new skills, prisoners can even earn a little money some of which is paid into a fund for victims, so good behaviour is rewarded. If you don't abide by the rules, any privileges can and will be taken away. But compared with prison conditions in centuries gone by, the loss of liberty is now regarded as enough of a punishment. One person prisoners have to thank for that was an 18th century Quaker, Elizabeth Fry, who helped reform the prison system to make it more humane. Our next hymn is by the Quaker poet John Greenleaf Whittier and comes from Elizabeth Fry's own meeting house in nearby Norwich. David has been in prison for 13 years. He won't be released until at least 2014. We're here for a reason. I'm here for a reason. So 
it's not supposed to be nice, but it can be very beneficial. And I've chose to make, make, make it benefit me. I've been on a journey. I've done all the education stuff. I've done vocational stuff. I've made myself employable, which I probably wasn't when I came away. But for me, it's finding out who I am, finding out who I can be. Anybody who I've hurt, any victim who I've created, I can only hope I can prove that I can be given a second chance and I, I can get a second chance with their blessing. I suppose you try and blame all sorts of things for things that go wrong in your life. But the realisation that you are in control of everything you do. You, may, you, have, you have a choice to make, you have decisions to make. And you make a wrong choice, you make a wrong decision. You've got to take responsibility for that. It can get very lonely at times and you can feel very alone. Although you do build up a rapport with people in prison, whether that be um, staff or our inmates, I can only take it to a certain point. And that's very difficult because I am a very, I suppose I'm an emotional person and I do miss my family. And that separation is very hard to deal with.